It was a Friday night in the big city, and on a Friday night you'll find me making my rounds at the Lakeview Hotel, a two-bit armpit on the upside of downtown. Anytime before midnight, that is. After midnight, you'll catch me drowning my proverbial sorrows at the five-star dive bar in the lobby of that hotel. But at ten minutes to midnight, I'm always here in my office, watching the clock. You see, the hotel had been wallowing in Reading for quite some time now. In fact, as hotel detective, I'd personally investigated six unsolved murders in the last five weeks. And committed four. So, the management wasn't entirely happy with my proverbial job performance. So that's why they told me anyone who clocked even one minute of unauthorized overtime would be out of a proverbial job. Literally. And by anyone, they meant me. Dick Piston, hotel detective. And that's why, ten minutes to midnight, I had my proverbial eyes glued to the roll clock. Because when that strikes twelve, my Friday night nightmares become somebody else's Saturday morning problem. So if my luck holds true... Dick Piston, I need you! Lady Luck, you could set your watch by her. I need your help! My friend's about the man you're looking for. But you are the hotel detective. For nine more minutes I am, but there's not going to be a tenth. So I'm afraid if it's anything more time consuming than a stuck pickle jar, I'm going to have to refer you to the dish. But you have to help me. I'm the victim of a crime. Unless the crime is an unnecessary wetness, there's not much I can do in the time allotted. It's not unnecessary wetness. Are you sure? Because I've got a blow dryer on the desk. Mr. Piston, please. You can't just turn your back on me. Not in that outfit, no. Then you'll help me. For nine more minutes, I am. But that's all the time we've got. Will that be enough? Depends on the crime. What's yours? I think they call it murder. And you say you're the victim? Yes, it happened just now, up in my hotel room. Uh-huh. You know what vic- you know what murder is, right? It's the one where someone kills somebody, right? That's the one. Yay! Oh boy, well, I'm gonna take your case, but I'm also gonna set this timer. Well, no matter what, when this timer goes off, case dismissed. Is that understood? Oh, thank you, Mr. Piston. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Coming here to tell us thanks enough. You're welcome. So, if you'll take a seat, I have to make a phone call. But aren't you going to rush up to my room and examine the scene of the crime? Ordinarily I would, but we don't have that kind of time. Hello? Front desk. It's me, Dick Piston, hotel detective. Put me through to the kitchen. What are you doing? Ordering room service. Will that speed up the investigation? Not at all. Then why are you doing it? Because no man in his right mind would ever be alone in a room with a woman in a towel with at least a bottle of champagne and a half order of oysters on the way. I'll have the honeymoon special. Send us my office pronto and a box of condoms. Thank you, Mr. Piston. How can I ever repay you? Well, there's condoms coming. Mr. Piston, I am a married woman. You can never repay me. And how did you know this was our honeymoon? Just tell me about your murder and get this over. If we make this quick, I still might have time to Xerox some resumes before morning. Well, I was up in my room taking a shower before dinner. So you have eaten? No, not yet, but those oysters sound delicious. And the murder took place in the bathroom? No, the bedroom. After your shower? During. So you were shot in the shower by someone in the bedroom. What makes you think I was shot? Because if you were stabbed, you would have been in the same room as the killer. My god, you think you was in the shower with me? No, I think you were shot. But I wasn't shot. Look! Or stabbed for that matter, but it looks like you've had a close shave of some kind. No, that's waxing. Alright, given that you're not harmed in any way... Have you ever been waxed? What makes you think you were murdered? Oh, I wasn't murdered. But you said you were. No, I said I was the victim of a crime. And the crime was murder! Oh, well done, Mr. Piston. With your keen eye for detail, we'll have this case sewed up in no time. If the crime is murder, and you're the victim, then why are you here? Well, I had to report it, didn't I? He was my husband, after all. The killer? No, the killery. The murder victim is your husband? Yes, he was shot in... He was shot in my bedroom, in the head, on the bed. So you're the victim by marriage? And this was supposed to be our honeymoon! I see. And is this how you were dressed when you discovered the body? Yes. I just stepped into the shower, where I was nude, Mr. Piston, can you imagine? When I heard what sounded like gunshots and a blood-curdling scream. So naturally, I finished my shower, put some makeup on, and rushed in right away to see what was the matter. That's when I found him, dead on the bed with a slug in his head. Were there any signs of forced entry? Well, he was dropping hints all weekend, so I was hoping. No, I mean to the room. Oh. No, everything seemed perfectly normal, except for that horrible dead guy lying there. You mean your husband? Yes, that was his name. Guy. And he was horrible? Oh yes, brains everywhere. Well, Miss Guy, normally this is the point in the investigation where I would rush up to your hotel room to examine the body. But we don't have that kind of time, so let's cut to the proverbial chase. 
Room service. There's your killer. Oh, oh my, but how could you possibly know that? Was your husband clinically insane? No, not clinically. That's how I know. I don't understand. And there's no time to explain. No, wait. There's four minutes. Allow me to explain. If there are no signs of forced entry, then the husband must have let the killer into the room himself, which means the murderer must have been someone your husband knew personally or expected shortly. A bellhop, for example. Why would he be expecting a bellhop? Because he wasn't clinically insane. And since no man in his right mind would ever be alone in a room with a woman in a towel without at least a bottle of champagne and a half order of oysters on the way, he ordered room service. It makes perfect sense. And as you just witnessed, the service in this hotel is incredibly prompt. Oh yes, very. We ought to make sure and leave him a big tip. So he must have ordered it while you were still in the shower, yet you haven't eaten. Because there wasn't any food. Exactly. Which means if there were no edibles and evidence, it means that the killer removed the food immediately after the crime to conceal the fact that the killer came from the kitchen. I don't know why I didn't see it before. Which means your husband must have been murdered by the night shift bellhop who gained access to your room under the pretense of delivering a romantic appetizer which you never got to enjoy. Because after murdering your husband in cold blood and not wanting to leave any fact that the killer came from the kitchen, he removed the telltale oysters and champagne from the scene, leaving the telltale oysters gone confirming his guilt. But why would this bellhop want to kill my husband? Because unbeknownst to your late husband, he was having an extramarital affair with his wife. You're married? No, you. She was having an affair with you. What? How could you possibly know that? Because you still haven't asked me the one question any widow in her right mind would possibly ask in this situation. Why would this bellhop want to kill my husband? But I did ask. You did? When? Just now, just a second ago. I said it right away. It was practically the first thing that popped into my mind. Oh, right. Well, hmm. You really haven't been paying attention to a thing I've said, have you, Mr. Piston? For God's sake, you're wearing a towel! That has no reason to accuse me of being an adulteress, and worse yet, an accomplice to murder! You're right, I'm sorry. I apologize. Accepted. Shame about that bellboy, though. Yeah, listen, my boss will have my proverbial head if she finds out I shot another innocent bystander, so can we just agree that this was a self-inflicted? Of course, Mr. Piston. He looks suicidal the moment he walked in here. Aha! Oh? A likely story. But it's your story. Exactly. Why would this widow want to cover up the murder of someone who killed her husband if he didn't do it? Unless he had everything to do with it. But that could only mean two things, Mr. Piston. No, it can only mean one. I think you're forgetting one possibility. What's that? That the widow, in fact, is not in her right mind. Hmm. Well, this is a little embarrassing for the both of us, but, uh... I guess I was wrong again, and my shift is almost over, so I guess you're free to go. Oh, thank you, Mr. Piston. I can't tell you how what a relief this is. You may not have solved my husband's murder, but knowing I'm innocent of all charges is a huge relief off my mind. What little there is left of it, I mean. Oh, how could I possibly repay you? Well, there's condoms coming, and I'm off in two minutes. Oh, Mr. Piston. I think we can get you off before then. Well, I didn't see that coming. Neither did I. You're alive. But that's impossible. Actually, no. You're a terrible shot, Piston. Yeah, sorry about that. Don't be. Until recently, this lady and I were having a tour affair. Behind her husband's back and over his dead body. Ew. At least I thought we were. I thought we were in love. But now I see she was only using me to get what she wanted all along. A dead husband and an airtight alibi. What makes you think she was using you? What woman in her right mind would leave her man for another man, only to throw herself in the arms of a third man? a third-rate hotel detective over the lifeless corpse of her dead lover. The second man, unless of course she never truly loved him to begin with, and was only using him to get rid of her wealthy husband, who she didn't love. And she probably didn't care for that detective much either. Well, if you waited a couple minutes, she might have cared a little bit. Forget it, Piston. We're all victims here. Well, actually not me. No, I suppose not. But if you have a second, I believe I can correct that oversight. Wow, look at the time. Looks like your time is running out, Dick Piston. Hotel detective. But why would you want to shoot me? I didn't do anything to you except for shooting you a minute ago. I think you're forgetting the possibility that I too might, be, not, might not be in the right state of mind. Well, I took that into account when you shot two people at your place of work.
What was that? Your luck running out. No, it sounded more like an egg timer. Case dismissed. It was a Friday night in the big city, and on Friday night, my proverbial work here was done. Literally.